Hello, my name is Madeline Herrera, and I will be responding to Trevor's claim that the Internet of Things, or IoT, is dangerous for all involved. The claims brought up were one, the IoT is anti consumer, two, the IoT is a danger to public health and national security, and three, the IoT is unhealthy to businesses in the long run. As for his first point that the IoT is anti consumer, the illustration used was that you essentially can own a brick that is just serviced by the company. And he went on to give the example of Nest System thermostats, that you couldn't open it up and wire it as that's against what the company is allowed to do, like the user fees. However, there are practical reasons for this too. When we buy a product, it's to be used for its intended purpose, and companies don't allow people to open up their products because for one, along with servicing your brick, they also agree in most cases to warranties. They will not only service it, but they will fix it for you when it breaks. And according to fine law, when the consumer has used a product for something other than its intended purpose, a merchant may choose not to honor the terms of warranty by declaring it void. And ironically, when, it, when you open it up, your device proves hazardous to your health. So, because as it's listed in Greenpeace Asia, brominated flame retardants, which are used in circuit boards and plastic casings, and long-term exposure can lead to interference with thyroid and estrogen hormone systems, the exposure in the womb has also been linked to behavioral problems. Lead exposure can lead to damage in nervous blood and reproductive systems. Cadmium, which is in computer battery chargers, is highly toxic and affects the kidneys and bones. Mercury, which is used in flat screen displays, can damage brain and central nervous systems. And then PVC is also in electronic products for insulation and wire cables. And they're highly persistent in the environment, and they are toxic, toxic even in low concentrations. Um, another point brought up is that the internet-connected vehicles are dangerous as well. Personally, the idea that someone hacking into my car is just not a very comforting thought. However, as technology, technology and internet connections advance, so do our safeguards against it, um, like the Spy Car Act of 2015, which was newly formed out of the auto ISAC, which recently published a best practice guideline for cybersecurity on wheels, with national governments leading to bills such as Spy Car proposed by Spy Car Act proposed by Senators Marquis and Blumenthal, so meaning it's already been sent to the House of Representatives, that has a list of guidelines that all car companies would have to abide by to make sure that their vehicles are cyber safe for hacking and such. His other point he went on was for the city traffic light system that digital security does not work like that. If we tell them how to do it, our security is lost, is how he explained it. There is a bit of misinformation as digital security is the equivalent of your digital identity. So your digital identity, for example, is like a debit card. It's literally your physical identity in a different form. Um, so it doesn't really equate to what the same security system that um, the city traffic lights use. Um, going on to a secondary claim to you that the Internet of Things is a danger to public health and national security, he listed off things which is a danger to public health and devices that could be hacked into, but I'm going to focus on pacemakers. Yes, pacemakers are wireless, but wireless does not equate to Internet, like your wireless earphones aren't connected through Internet with Bluetooth. In fact, Internet-connected pacemakers are still in development. Pacemakers currently transmit information to an external device, which is only accessed by one person. And in regards to developing internet-connected pacemakers, uh, a researcher in the UPV slash EHU's Department of Communications Engineering has developed the Landed Security Protocol, an efficient mechanism to authenticate, authorize, and establish the end-to-end -end keys. So the keys for communication between the terminal used by the doctor and the patient's device, which offers revolutionary features for sensors of this type. So they're not currently out in the market just yet as an accepted um, type of device that's used regularly. And they, another um, dangerous thing he said can be hacked into our nuclear power plants. History has definitely proved that even when something other than internet connectivity messes with its functions, as seen with the incident of Chernobyl, but, however, those fears of hacks are a bit unfounded because according to the Nuclear Energy Institute, uh, critical safety and security systems at nuclear energy facilities are isolated from the Internet. They are further protected by cybersecurity, 
and physical security plans are required by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. In addition, nuclear power plants are designed to shut down safely should their systems detect a disturbance on the electrical grid. Thus, nuclear plants are, are protected from digital threats upon layer upon layer of safety measures. His last point was that the IoT is unhealthy to business in the long run. In the speech, he did not have time to cover this, and his quotes and sources did not really make it clear as to what points he was trying to make. So his claim was not backed up by um, usable evidence. However, internet connectivity has opened a business to global opportunities, especially for small businesses. It has great advantages. In conclusion, the claim that the internet of things is dangerous for all involved is a bit thrown out of proportion. Um, the internet of things is a continuous work in progress and is making more advancements than step backwards. As society advances, more and more we become aware of techno technology and internet connections flaws. However, we adjust accordingly as I had approved of the Spy Car Act, the explanation of nuclear power plants, cybersecurity, to reiterate a few. Something to consider is also what is the alternative? a world without internet connection and global access. We would step three decades into the past. To live in fear means we bring technological and even societal advancement to a halt. Thank you. All right, well, you identify the advocate's claim very clearly. You uh, follow the structure uh, very nicely, and there's no confusion there. I thought you had a pretty good summary of the advocate's arguments. Uh, the only place where there is really any challenge on the advocate's evidence is primarily on the uh, use of examples and the suggestion that those examples might be insufficient to advance a claim. The argument about the thermostat, for instance, I think is you've got your rationalization and explanation about why that uh, it shouldn't be tampered with, and then you've got a whole bunch of explanations about those sorts of things. I guess the inference was that the advocate thinks that all kinds of uh, technology should be accessible to consumers to modify or change, and your position is that's generally not what their function is, and to do so is both dangerous and uh, violates the warranties, which mean, you know renders uh, any promises made about their efficacy uh, void. I thought that those were very clear answers on those points. I think it could be broader than just the uh, thermostat issue, and there probably could be a couple of examples that you could add yourself there that would make that point. The um, argument about uh, vehicles, I think, you, you say, look, we're developing cybersecurity. We've already got rules in place or that are being discussed to be put in place. I think that addresses that issue pretty well. I don't remember what the advocate's evidence on this point said, so uh, it's not your arguments aren't specific to that evidence. It's just a general counterclaim uh, on that particular point. And the traffic lights thing, I'm still not quite sure what the security issue is with the how the cybersecurity for an individual and the cybersecurity for the traffic lights either is or is not the same thing and why that matters. It was not clear to me uh, at all. All right, on the Internet of Things, the second point, you focus primarily on the idea of the pacemaker as an illustration of that point. I don't remember what the advocate's other points would be. If, it, if we were in a debate and they had other examples, they would probably go to those. You suggest that uh, he's conflated um, wireless with the same thing as being uh, Internet access, and it's not the same thing. You do a good job explaining that. You talk about what some of the safeguards are that are being put in place there. And then you did the same thing for nuclear power plants, which I thought had a very good response on that particular point. All right. Thank you.